Clive, do you want to go ahead and remember back? I was going to go back a little bit further than what Catherine uh, started with, and that is that um, the media and, and of course the government have put out this idea that uh, we were expecting this uh, attack or this uh, siege or whatever, and that we were all uh, busily arming ourselves and waiting in ambush for them when they drove in. Um, just recently, the uh, insurance company out of Atlanta uh, for the Cox newspaper uh, syndicate uh, paid off the ATF in, in the court case they had against uh, the Waco newspaper and the t local TV station Channel 10. Uh, they were suing them saying that they had tipped us off and that we knew they were coming and we were prepared for them. And um, so to take you back a little bit further, we actually knew that something was going on two months before February 28th, but we didn't know who was involved and we didn't know what it was all about. All we knew was that there were some men that had moved into the house across the street that were acting very strange. They were shooting out in the backyard of their house. Um, their windows were always dark at night, even though we knew they were there. Um, a lot of strange things going on. They, they didn't bring any suitcases with clothes and things like that. And so we kind of felt that we were perhaps being watched. Uh, I think probably the, the biggest idea that came to most people's mind, well, maybe uh, they belong to the immigration people, uh, trying to see if there's any illegal immigrants, you know, inside. And so uh, this went on for almost like six or seven weeks. and. Uh, at some point in that observation that they were doing, uh, they made contact by a couple of them came over and visited one day and eventually it led to this um, ATF agent, which we found out what he was later, uh, by the name of Rod Robert Rodriguez who said he wanted to start having Bible studies with David Koresh. And so he um, started to come over and visit He'd come over for a couple of hours and maybe have a private Bible study with David and, and so on. But on the day before the raid, he had spent the whole day with us. He had come over, and uh, it was a Saturday, and so we'd had our regular meetings. And he'd spent the whole day, and um, at the end of the day, he indicated that he had to leave town. But when he got back after several days, he, he wanted to move in with us if he could, if, if he'd be allowed, uh, so that he could have, you know, more studies and kind of just enter into the whole thing that we were involved in, uh, you know, the daily living and the Bible studies. So uh, David welcomed him. He says, fine. Uh, unbeknownst to me on the 28th, uh, as Catherine mentioned, he shows up that morning. Uh, with the second edition of this uh, series that the newspaper was writing about us, uh, or about David, called The Sinful Messiah. He had come out there with copies of this, and as I said, I didn't know that he'd even showed up that day, because I wasn't expecting him to come back. And uh, it was only probably because it was raining that day that most of the, the guys had not gone out to work. Uh, we'd had breakfast, and uh, basically were hanging around our, our rooms. Uh, when at at some point, uh, and I'm not real sure of the time, it uh, couldn't have been um, too, much after, too much later than uh, when Robert left, I guess, um, I heard some noise out in the, in the cafeteria area, a lot of people, you know, and this kind of a hubbub going on, and so I went out there to see what was going on, and uh, it was at that point that people were saying, well, uh, we've just heard that something's going to happen, somebody's coming. And so uh, about the time I walked in and, and, you know, became aware of this going on, David Koresh walked in from the other side into the kitchen area and uh, basically confirmed that he just heard somebody was coming out. He says, and I want everybody to stay cool. Uh, he says, you know, just go back to your rooms and uh, I'm going to go down to the front door and talk to them. And so I went back to my room. He went out the other way, uh, down the hall toward the front door. And the next thing I heard uh, was David's voice at the front door saying, hey, wait a minute, there's women and children in here. You know, let's talk about this. And all hell broke loose. There's just shots, uh, just seemed like hundreds of shots coming in, in from the outside, in through the front door, 
And uh, my immediate reaction was, my God, is a massacre. You know, whoever went to the front door is bound to have uh, been hit with all this uh, fuselage of bullets that had come in. So I went running down the hall, and the uh, first person I came to was Perry Jones, who had uh, dragged himself up the hall, uh, uh, several feet anyway, uh, from the front door area. And uh, he was screaming that he'd been shot, and uh, he was clutching his stomach. And uh, so I bent over him and was trying to console him, and, and uh, you know, and I says, well, what happened? He says, well, they started shooting at the front door. He says, that, uh, David got shot, I'm shot. So I said, well, hang in there for a minute. And I ran down to the front door expecting to see bodies all over the place. And to my surprise, there wasn't anyone there. I mean, the whole foyer area inside the front door was empty, but the whole, uh, the wall, the front wall was just riddled. The doors especially were just riddled with bullets and some of the windows had been shot out. And so I ran back to Perry and helped him back to his room, um, put him on a bunk bed, uh, went and got him, tried to get him some pain pills because he was just screaming with uh, the agony of the, the wounds he had. And uh, somebody came to me about the time I put him down on the bed and I says, well, Winston's dead, Winston Blake. I said, well, where's he at? He said, he's up in his room. So I went up toward his room, and I could hear all this water running, and I thought, that's strange. What, what's causing that, you know? And as I rounded the door into his room, Winston was laying on the floor in a pool of blood and water, um, and all this water was pouring through these holes uh, at an angle into the into the room. The, the bullet holes were high on the outside and low as they came in. And I thought, my God, they're shooting from helicopters or planes or something, you know. And uh, so just everything was turmoil. I mean, there was chaos. There was people screaming, and and and, and uh, I end up running back down the hall, uh, and uh, Wayne Martin. Uh, that's the lawyer that we had out there. He was in the process of dialing 911 by the time I got down the other, complete the other end of the hall from where I was staying. And uh, he was calling the sheriff's department. And uh, it took him 45 minutes to, to, to get a ceasefire. Well, excuse me, 45 minutes to get in, uh, in contact with the ATF. He didn't even have contact with them. Uh, it took about two and a half hours to get the thing stopped. And uh, by that time, we found out that we had five on the inside dead, uh, another four or five wounded. And uh, of course, we were beginning to hear on the radio by that time that and we knew that there were wounded on the other side too, you know, the ATF. But uh, throughout that shootout, I mean, you know, it was a lot of firing at the, at the beginning, and then it was more sporadic. Uh, for the rest of the time. And, uh, you know, when I had a, a break, you might say, from running back and forth with these 911 calls and checking on the wounded and that, I'd, I'd ask people, who's out there? Who's, who's shooting? What's going on? You know, where are they? And I'd try to look out a window without exposing myself, and I couldn't see anybody. I never even saw an ATF agent until they all stood up to, to leave. You know, you've probably seen that footage uh, in the news where they got up and I got, my God, where'd they all come from, you know? And uh, it was it was traumatic, it was scary, and yet it was, uh, you know, actually I thought, considering uh, the women and the children uh, and the people that were inside that were under this tremendous attack, this tremendous volley of firing, uh, actually handled themselves very calmly, I thought. 